Shalom, shalom. We give all praises to Yahweh by Shimei Awashah. We give double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone. Peace and shalom to the elect. That's pushing this word throughout the four corners of the globe. This is your brother Shemar Omar from the D.C. camp. I'm going to come out with a couple uh, uh, history, going into the history of this uh, so-called Christian or Catholic doctrines, um, breaking down all strongholds. As you know that uh, there was a Protestant Reformation, so-called Protestant Reformation, where they protest against the Catholic Church on certain subjects. And there was two main people in the head of that, a man named Martin Luther and a man named, uh, what's his name? A man named uh, John Calvin. When you hear these two names, you first you think about the Reformation um, during the uh, the the late 1500s, early 1500s, mid 1500s, all the way up to the 1600s. This is when thought, or so-called thought, in the Catholic Church had to be revisited, because there's in the scriptures, as as you well know, in the scriptures. There's a predestination. There's also a chosen people. But Re Reformation of the Catholic Church, when the so-called Edomites came into rulership around the 1400s, they had to revisit the whole Bible. And part of that, part of that visit uh, is predestination. Whereas Martin Luther took on the thought, took on uh, the writings wrote what he thought about predestination, meaning a chosen people before the world began, chosen where others cannot be chosen for salvation. So when we get into this, we found this letter, I found this uh, writing on the internet by this guy named Don Matzat whatever the hell that means. But he wrote this paper and it says the concept of predestination has confused and separated Christians for generations. Well, that's because you didn't understand predestination. It's not given to everyone to understand the scriptures. We're going to get into that. Brothers already know. It said, how did Martin Luther deal with this doctrine? Because if it cannot be explained, and if the Holy Scriptures and the Holy Spirit is not dealing with you, what must you do when you're an Edomite or a person who don't know the Scriptures and the Holy Spirit is not working with you? What do people tend to do? Well, what they tend to do, as we have seen on the highways and byways, through comments and comment boards, that they try to discredit first the Bible. That's their first thing. Let's just throw everything out out the window, the baby with the bath water, and let's talk about love or what we're going to do now or let's change things or the Bible was so long ago that it has no relevance today. Well, you would say that when the scriptures and salvation and kingdom and rulership don't apply to you. That's a very easy cop out. And our people, talking about the Israelites, the Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, have attached to this type doctrine where they would throw the Bible out completely, throw, throw out all religion, throw, throw out all worship, and say, I'm an atheist. I don't believe in none of it. Well, I'm here to tell you, we're here to tell you, Spirit of the Lord, through the power of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Yahweh being the Heavenly Father, Yahweh Shai being His only begotten Son, that there is a salvation and it's coming. There is a destruction in which you need salvation from. And we're going to, we're going to talk about this. This is, um, I took out excerpts from the paper, didn't want to be too long and drawn out, just want to get to the point of predestination. 
you look up this guy Don Matz that is a, is a bunch of stuff that he talked about about Martin Luther and his thoughts. Well, let's let's uh let's get into it. It says the doctrine of predestination was not central to Martin Luther's theology. Wait a minute. It's in the Bible. Ephesians the first chapter speaks about it. I guess he didn't read that part or as you find out he leaves it out. The substance of sola gra gra gratia or grace alone was not in the doctrine of election, but in the cross of Yahweh Shai Hamashiach. He believed that one should follow the systematic predestinate pre, uh, presentation of scripture, especially as illustrated in the book of Romans. He writes, in chapter 9, 10, and 11 of Romans, the apostle teaches about eternal predestination of God. It says, follow the order of this, epistle, uh, of this epistle, first to be concerned about the anointed and the gospel in order to recognize your sins and his grace, then fight against your sins. That's true. But who is it speaking to? Later, Lutheran theologies, theologians varied in their positioning of the doctrine of election. Wait a minute, it's in there. But they varied in their positioning, meaning they switched it up. In their systematic presentation of biblical doctrine, Francis Piper, or Pieper, for example, in his three-volume Christian Dogmatics, a uh, three-volume uh, book, Christian Dogmatics, presented the doctrine of election at the very end of his work. Why was it put at the end? Why did he address it at the end? This is the basis of salvation. This is the basis of prophecy of who the world called Jesus Christ. Of His name is Yahweh in the Hebrew. It says immediately before his section, on the end of the age, because predestination is going to work at the end days. But why are you speaking about it in the end? This should be first and foremost in your teachings that election comes first. Chosen comes first. Martin Luther believed that any debate discussion or argument over the doctrine of election should be avoided. <laughs> well, that's a good way to not speak about it. Just avoid the subject. Brothers know when they uh, speak to Christians, talk to Christians or, 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 or email or, or write on the comment boards to Christians, they always avoid subjects. When you avoid subjects, you don't, you don't strengthen your claim. Actually, you weaken your claim by avoiding certain subjects. Oh, that don't matter. Color don't matter. Oh, it's, 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 it's everyone could be saved. But when it says world, oh, world, that means everyone. Look up the word. We break out the word definitions. And the word means a selected people or a selected group. You can't avoid the truth. He wrote, Martin Luther, a dispute about predestination should be avoided entirely. I forget everything about Christ and God when I come upon these thoughts and actually get to the point of him imagining that God is rogue and rogue is someone who is mischievous or uncontrolled and undisciplined. That's what the word rogue means. Wait a minute. You remember uh, uh, Mission Impossible, rogue agent? Well, they call him a rogue ag agent when he couldn't be in control. So they're saying, wait, God can't be controlled. You mean you can't control his will? You're the one that's rogue. It says, we must stay. And he, and he said, <laughs> he said that, we missed the point by talking about election, right? 
and focus on God. Wait a minute. What? We must stay in the word, which they don't, in which God is revealed to us and salvation is offered. Who's the us? The elect. If we believe him. So who's the we? Again, the elect. But in thinking about predestination, we forget God. How you forget God? This is part of his will. However, in Christ are hid all treasures. Colossians 1, uh, Colossians 2, 1 through 3, and 7 and 8. Let's get that real quick. Colossians Second chapter, verse one says, for I would know, I would that you knew what great conflict I've had of you and for them at Lysodicea. This is Paul speaking. And for as many as have not seen my face in the flesh, that their hearts might be comforted, being knit together in love and unto all riches of the full assurance of understanding to the acknowledgement of the mysteries of Yahweh and the Father and of Yahweh Shai, in whom are hid all treasures of wisdom and knowledge. Wait, knowledge and wisdom is hidden. So it says here, in Christ are hid all treasures. Yes, it is, because it's only given for a few. Jumping down to verse 7, it says, rooted and built up in him, talking about Yahweh Shai, and established in the faith, that means steadfast and unmovable, right? In the faith, as you have been taught, abounding there with thanksgiving. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit. After the tradition of men, Martin Luther is a man who don't have the understanding of Yahweh Shai, Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai's will. This is why he avoids certain subjects. This is why the Christian church avoids certain subjects. After the rudiments of the world and not after Yahweh Shai. And this is what they do. Continuing on, it says, such a disputation is so very displeasing to God, how would you know, that he has instituted baptism the spoken word and the Lord's supper to counteract the temptation to engage in it. Wait a minute. All of that is talking to the elect anyway. So how is he uh, uh, counteracting what's already been ordained? It says, in these, let us persist and constantly say, I am baptized. I believe in Jesus. I care nothing about the disputation concerning predestination. You want to focus on Yahweh Shai, throw out certain things that Yahweh Shai taught, that the Spirit of the Lord taught, the Holy Spirit, the Rechaj Kadash. You want to throw certain things out because it don't fit you or you don't fit it. Martin Luther did not know of the confusion and contention that would later exist among Christians and the major lot, and the major heresies such as universalism and the rebirth of polygonism, which is the original sin if you look it up, where man is capable of choosing good or evil without special divine aid. Well, Man's goings is of the Lord. How can a man understand his own way? That would arise as such a debate over doctrine of predestination. <laughs> so what he's saying is, if you knew the controversy that it would have, you would have spoke about it. You would have talked about it. If he had known he most certainly 
would have reminded us of his words. For this you should know, all such suggestions and disputes about predestination are surely of the devil. Wow. It's in there. Predestination is part of the doctrine, part of the scriptures, part of the will of Yahweh Bashim Shai from the beginning. You say it's of the devil. Martin Luther, you are of the devil. You're the son of Satan. You're the adversary to the scriptures. It says, perhaps the great reformer John Calvin If he had been able to see all the con uh, contentions that would arise in reaction to his position on predestination might have stopped where Luther stopped and allowed a mystery to be just that, a mystery. Well, the mystery, like the scripture said, is only revealed to the seek uh, the secrets is only revealed to the, se uh, the servants as prophets. Amos 3 and 7. Why stop? This is why we, men of Great Millstone, um, we go into these supposedly controversial subjects. People don't want to talk about the controversial subjects. And when it, when, it, when it says that there's a predestination, that means everyone can't make it. Anyone who calls on the name of Jesus can't make it. It's only for the predestined uh, children from the beginning. Genesis 18 Verse 17 through 19 said, And the Lord said, Shall I hide from Abraham that thing which I do, seeing that Abraham shall surely become a great and mighty nation, and all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him? For I know him, that he will command the children, just like we do, because we come in the spirit of Abraham, and his household after him. That they should keep the ways of Yahweh Bashim Shai. This is why we do it. We don't leave anything out. The good, the bad, and the ugly. To do justice and judgment, you need the scriptures to do that. This, the, the first five books of Moses, as well as the other scriptures, give you laws, statutes, commandments in which you should live and how to treat your people. This is what a government does. This is what a people do when they want to be in line with Yahweh Bashim Shai. You need just judgments. You need scriptures. You need law, statutes, commandments. And Abraham did this by faith. It says, it says, um, to do justice and judgment that the Lord may bring upon Abraham that which he has spoken of him. Which is what? The promises. The promises that his seed and his seed seed will be a mighty nation. Whoever blessed them, will, will they be blessed. Well, we haven't, we haven't been blessed by the other nations. We've been taken into captivity. We've been taken on cargo slave ships. We've been taken over to Europe. Native Americans, they haven't blessed us. They haven't blessed our nation. Last scripture, Proverbs 6 and 20 through 23. It says, My son, keep thy father's commandment and forsake not the Lord of thy mother. Bind them continually upon thy heart. Bind means to, is to make it stick. Tie it up. Wrap it up. Put a knot in it. Don't let go. And tie it about thy neck. When thou goeth, it shall lead thee. When thou sleepest, it shall keep thee. And when thou awakest, it shall talk with thee. The scriptures does this if you are a child of your Abba This is Solomon speaking. The wisest king of all and ever. For the commandment is a lamp, and the law is light, and reproofs of instruction are the way of life. How can you leave anything out if it's for your life, 
for your salvation. You can't leave anything out. You must continue in this word as the words say. You have to break it down if the spirit of the Lord is, is working with you. If not, this is what happens. Men following men to the ways of destruction because they don't want to speak about it. Avoiding the subject. This is what Christians do. We give all praises to Yahweh Bashim Yahushai. We give double honors as always to the men of Great Millstone, who is named Great Millstone in these times. Peace and Shalom to the elect that's pushing his word, breaking down these scriptures, and holding fast to what you've been taught in truth and sincerity. Disseminating the information to the people for the house of Dawada, the house of David, for the edification of the house of David, until the Savior comes back, whose name is Yahweh Shai, comes back and deliver us from this evil, wicked system. Shalom.